Hey guys, what's up, it is Ripe again, back with more revenge stories. If you haven't already, please don't forget to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash ripeyoutube for exclusive Reddit content. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. By the way guys, just a quick disclaimer, I know the audio quality today is not too great, that is because we are currently visiting the grandparents of my girlfriend and my audio setup here is kind of awful. My sincere apologies. Either way, let's continue with the first story. And the next one is titled, Revenge on my HOA slash nosy neighbor. A few days ago I received a call from my HOA telling me that a neighbor had complained about a tree swing I've put up in front of my house. The thing is, this swing has been up for about a year now, but I suspect the board is now targeting me because they didn't like how I spoke to them in the last meeting. I have read the bylaws and covenants and intend on fighting this the proper way, but in the meantime, petty revenge will have to do. I've already taken down my Christmas decorations as well as we are well past Christmas but have now taken them back out and set them up out front. So here is what I have done. I've set up a 10 foot tall inflatable reindeer, I've set up a 6 foot tall inflatable snowman family and moved my children's outside toys, bicycles etc. to the front yard, no mention of toys in the bylaws. I have also explained the story to a few friends and family and I am in the process of acquiring and setting up more inflatable Christmas decorations. Have I mentioned that this is all going down during the virus pandemic? My tree swing is that important. Guys, I don't know about you, but I would think that an HOA has more important things to do during a pandemic than caring about such little petty stuff. If you live in an HOA governed neighborhood, I am curious, ever since the pandemic started, did they do anything stupid? Let us know in the comments. And the next one is titled, sell beer to my kid, will ya? So we all know that sometimes revenge is a dish best served cold and this story is an old family legend. My grandmother was a pro at the long game and this was one of her best acts. Back in the 70s, there was a little pizza shop around the corner from the house that she discovered was selling beer to my 15 year old uncle. She marched right into the store during the busiest time on a Saturday night and yelled at the owner that that crap needed to stop now. The idiot waved her off and said it was his business and he could do whatever he wanted. He practically shoved her out the front door and told her not to come back. My grandmother told him if he ever sold beer to my uncle again, it would be the end of his days in that neighborhood. Remember, this was the 70s, the police were not really enforcing liquor laws as stringently as they are now, especially when it came to corner pizza shops and one woman allegations that their 15 year old son was getting beer illegally. Fast forward about a month and what does my grandmother find under my uncle's bed? Beer and she knows where he got it. She confronts him and just like before he says the pizza guy has been selling it to him and all the neighborhood kids. My grandmother asks some other mothers if they have found their kids with beer and sure enough, yep, that's the thing. Now you might be thinking, so what? A couple of teenagers with beer, big deal, we all did that. Except this guy was making a killing selling beer to the neighborhood kids. According to my uncle, he was selling to kids as young as 8, this he confirmed for me when he was an adult and even sold it to them out the back door after hours, which is really illegal since it breaks major liquor laws to do that. My grandfather then went to the cops and they played the we will take a report and look into it type of stance with him. Not to fear, my grandmother was going to make good on her threat. I should probably mention that this whole thing went down in August, my grandmother threatened my uncle with life imprisonment if he ever bought beer there again and to completely stay out of that shop because bad things were going to happen. August comes and goes and so does September, October, November and the entire winter and spring. 
Like I said, my grandmother liked to play the long game, so July rolls around and completely out of the blue, a municipal snowplow rolls down the street at midnight and right into the front of this guy's shop, backing up and smashing into it again and once more for good measure. It then pulls back and rolls down the street like nothing happened, never to be seen again. The whole thing was witnessed by a couple of neighbors sitting on their front steps trying to beat the heat that night. They called the cops and no one could believe what they were looking at and that there was a snowplow out in July. Clearly someone was mistaken. The mothers of the neighborhood knew there was no mistake, they knew what went down and it was a silent secret among them. No one spoke of it, no one acknowledged it and no one cared. My family knew the real story, my grandmother knew someone who needed money so she paid him to help. The guy had a buddy who had access to the snowplows for the county, the rest was history, even with all the money the pizza shop guy made selling beer to miners, he did not have adequate business insurance to rebuild. Within days, he was closed for good. You know guys, I gotta say, one of the actual biggest differences when I think of Germany and the United States is that here drinking alcohol even at a younger age is much less frowned upon than it is in the United States. I have once heard of people, young people in California getting arrested at the beach for drinking beer or something. While here it is pretty normal for teenagers to binge drink alcohol and no, I am not saying that is good because that is really a bad thing and then again, when I was 3 years old, I pretty clearly remember that my dad gave me some beer to taste. But guys, I gotta be honest with you, I am not a big fan of beer. Anyway, let's continue with the stories and if you haven't already, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also like the video if you want to support me. Thank you very much in advance. And the next one is titled, Go ahead buddy, keep stealing packages, eventually you're not gonna like what you get. Background story, I was hospitalized one night for a spine problem and riding for surgery next morning. I was in a big double bed with another patient with a couple of curtains separating two beds. The other patient was a stroke patient with no speaking ability or mobility and she has a caretaker, not patient's family. I was in agony so the doctor gave me something strong to fall asleep and it worked till 5 am. My caretaker neighbor for whatever reason started playing very loud music from her phone. I was jerking awake and pissed, it is 5 in the effing morning, are you kidding me? Let me sleep. So I asked her politely to turn off the music or using a headphone and surprisingly she just ignored me, not even bothered to say a word. The music was so loud that the nurse came in and asked her to turn it down because patients from the next room were complaining. The caretaker told the nurse her employer was not complaining so she is fine with the music and if there's a problem they should talk to her employer, not her. However, her employer was not able to speak and move, this is basically torture. Here is the malicious compliance part. I noticed my neighbor patient always go to physical therapy at 9am and her horrible caretaker would stay in the room and sleep until 11.30am. Also, I made sure there's no other patients in the next room and told the nurse what my plan is. Then I had my laptop and Bluetooth speaker with me, I started to play the whole 2016 Tomorrowland playlist and turned the room into a nightclub. The caretaker was so pissed and screamed at me saying she was sleeping and my music woke her up. Well, tell your employer to file a complaint against me to the hospital or let your employer talk to me directly. And since then my journey in the hospital was 100 times easier. Long edit, for some people who have questions about why the hospital would not kick her out, it is a complicated question, basically the caretaker is not employed by the hospital so they cannot just kick her out but sure they can ask her to leave. By removing her, it will cause more problems like who's going to take care of the patient, also the hospital will risk losing a profitable patient if they piss the patient's family off. It is sad, but it is the reality of healthcare systems in my country. 
And guys, I am really curious in hearing your experiences with the healthcare system in your own country. Did you ever have any negative experiences? Let us know in the comments. And the last one is titled Animal Abusing Hack Gets Drop Kicked from the Neighborhood. First time poster, let me know if this belongs elsewhere. One year ago, I was renting a house next to the most unpleasant neighbor I hope to ever experience. The only thing I liked about her was her cat, this freakishly adorable tabby who could grab even the most hardened criminal's heart by the balls. Every time I came home from work, he would sit idle up next to me for some TLC, which he never got from my neighbor. As far as I could tell, she just used the poor thing to keep away mice and play, for example be terrorized by her toddler grandkids on the weekends. The poor fur baby looked severely unnerved and always appreciated the meals that I would leave out for him on our back porch. Now, I have an indoor fur baby of my own, a tailless ball of energy, aptly named Goblin, and one day he managed to escape outside. Luckily I found him within a few hours, but by the next morning, what jumps on my lap? Not goblin, alas, but a flea. And if my social butterfly cat had fleas, I was positive the next door fur baby had fleas too. Now, I already had a bitter history with this neighbor, in addition to being a twat rocker to her cat, she had harassed my older parents who were helping me move in. Why? because our U-Haul rental was blocking a sidewalk to nowhere in front of my house for all of 10 minutes. My parents are extremely pleasant people, my mom frequently gets thanked on customer service hotlines for being the rare kind soul in an ocean of impatient Karens. And this lady was berating them needlessly for ruining the community ranting even longer than they had been parked, unless they eventually moved to an inconvenient and wholly unnecessary distance. Regardless of her twat rocket personality, I figured I would warn her anyway in the best interests of her fur baby when I knew she was at home the next day, I knocked on her front door and when she answered, no hello, just a scowl, I started to explain that my escaped indoor cat had fleas, so there was a good possibility that her outdoor cat also had fleas. Immediately she berates me for letting my cat get fleas and snaps that she keeps her house very clean, unlike me, so there's no way her cat has fleas. I just loudly sighted her and went back home as she continued to yell. You've never ever been in my house lady and that is not how fleas work. All week I noticed her cat scratching himself raw and felt so bad for the little guy. I wanted to give him flea medication and a flea bath, but with my neighbor now watching me like a hawk and screeching like a banshee, if I even pet him anymore, I had to leave him alone. But I realized there was something I could do. You see, we shared the same landlord who was very concerned about household pets and instructed us to call him at the first sight of a bed bug, tick, etc. And I also knew that my neighbor was keeping her cat a secret from the landlord to avoid paying the pet rent as I had overheard her bragging about this to a friend outside one day. So what do I do? I call up the landlord to explain the flea situation and I make sure to add that my neighbor's cat has also been scratching like crazy, so there's a pause. Did you say she has a cat? Yes, I assure him, she definitely has an indoor-outdoor cat. Turns out that my neighbor had harassed our landlord into replacing most of her carpet due to her alleged cat allergy. I don't know why the landlord caved into this, but it was not cheap. And now our landlord learned that not only had mad woman lied about an allergy to score a free renovation, but she had not paid pet rent in more than a year. Well, an exterminator gets called and our landlord himself shows up to oversee the whole thing. We had both received a flyer taped to our front doors, giving notice that he would be coming to our houses on that date, but I may or may not have removed my neighbors, so she wouldn't be able to just hide evidence of her cat for a few hours. So our landlord arrives and I listen gleefully with my window open, as my neighbor tries to prevent him and the exterminator from entering. 
Eventually, she allows them to come inside, where there is obvious evidence of a pet living there. I don't know exactly what transpired between her and the landlord, there must be other shit stains on her record, being such a nutcase, but a few months later I had a new next door neighbor. And guess who Mad Woman purposely abandoned during the move? Her poor fur baby, who became a much loved and flea free member of our house. Don't like something that doesn't affect you? Then don't try and change it. Long time listener, first time poster, please forgive the rambling. This jolly little tale takes us back almost a decade to the spring slash summer of 2008. But first a little background to set the story. When my grandmother passed away, she left my dad her house, a small little single floor place in a small community in a fairly rural area along the Potomac River. I spent many summers here fishing and engaging in other fun water related activities while making friends with the kids of the houses across the street. Being a bit of a river community, there was a private beach and pier for HOA members, you would get a lot of people who bought a house for the weekends with the intent to retire there. The primary parties involved here are first, the house of crazy rabbit daughter, my parents and I, second, the house of Moomba, our neighbors across the street, and three, house of RV, longtime friends of HOM, and number four, house of fun, the family behind HOM, and number five, grumpy old people, housed directly to the west of HOM. Many years before the incident, as all members of the houses got a lock, interacted, kids played etc, HORV and HOM got to talking. You see, HORV had a small class CRV, not too big, about 20-ish feet in my opinion. And wouldn't it be cool to bring that up and keep it on HOM's property to function as extra sleeping space etc on all these fun weekends? The next weekend the RV is brought up, parked in HOM's side yard parallel to the street on the east side of the house. All goes well for several years until the spring up 2008. You see, the GOP had decided that they were going to spend more time at their river house, where they used to come down every couple of months and hide out in their home, they are now coming down every weekend, trying to be social and having friends and family with them. The RV, however, was apparently making this impossible, never mind the fact that they could not actually see it, as it was completely hidden by HOM's house. So GOP comes up with a plan. They complain to the community HOA several times, enough that the HOA feels they should get involved. So the HOA starts pestering HOM to have the RV removed, HOM says, no, no because the HOA rules and regs have nothing in them about keeping RVs on property etc and the HOA has no leg to stand on in the situation. They have to tell GOP too bad, so sad, better luck next time. GOP decided that this is not good enough, so if the HOA doesn't have a rule or regulation that helps, they will create one. At the next board meeting a motion is created and gains some support. GOP however goes beyond the RV and are now wanting to include other things as well, tractors, boats, decrepit outbuildings. They very quickly lose support as this would now cause problems with a lot of the current HOA members and board members. The motion falls on its face. You would think this was the end of it, but no. GOP just couldn't let such an injustice go, so after licking their wounds from the failed motion to change the HOA by laws, they make an anonymous tip to the county about some nonsense about people living inside an RV. Keep in mind that HOC, HOM, HORV and HOF are all weekenders and don't actually live there and one sunny afternoon, while the lord and lady of HOM are outside doing a little yard work, an official county person stops by to investigate the claims of people living full time in an RV. This is very quickly discovered to not be true and the county official goes on their merry way. But the complaints keep coming in. 
county officials keep having to come out, this goes on for a few months, HOM and HORV are beyond annoyed. HOC and HOF are irritated and HOC has talked to many of the surrounding neighbors. We have a long ties to the community and know many of them very well and are on very good terms. So we ask around and from the grapevine learn that it is GOP that is filing all the complaints. In fact there is a rumor floating around that one of the reasons GOP is doing this is because they wanted to buy HOM's property before HOM did and are bitter that they were not able to do this. There is a lot of back and forth with the county government people, while no one actually lives in the RV, people do occasionally stay in it on weekends. After a few months, the county decides this is ok, but the RV will have to be moved. Its current location on the property puts it in direct line of sight of the street, so it needs to move behind the house. HOM and HORV are fine with this. Because it turns out that HORV was planning on selling the little RV in order to buy a larger one that they would eventually travel around the country in after they retired. So the little RV gets driven off on a nice Sunday and GOP is ecstatic. They think they have won, imagine their surprise the next weekend when a big honking fifth wheel gets parked exactly where the county said it could be parked in the back of HOM's property in clear view of the nice screened in patio that GOP just finished building. Don't like knowing a small RV is on your neighbors property out of your sight? Tough, cause all that complaining means you and your wife get to stare at it every time you drag your self-centered asses outside. And guys unfortunately we have reached the end of the video and I just would like to once again apologize for the audio quality today but as I said currently I am not really on holiday but we are visiting the grandparents of my girlfriend and the recording situation here is more than difficult to say the least. Either way I hope it was possible to still watch this and not get any bad headaches or something and if you did I sincerely apologize. Either way thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day and I see you again tomorrow.